All right, so we've just got Zach from Inspire here. He's an exercise physiologist. I'm, uh, I just send any client to him that has any uh, injuries that needs to be fixed through exercise, and he helps them out. So I'll just get you to give a bit of an overview about what you do, Zach. Yep, no worries. So yeah, as I said, guys, my name's Zach. I'm from Inspire Health. Uh, we're an exercise physiology company in Brisbane. Um, our area of specialty is in movement-based dysfunction and exercise programming. Uh, we team up with guys like Cody and other physiotherapists from an acute rehab angle. Um, we try to bridge the gap between return to play and functional personal training. Um, so that's kind of how me and Cody tie in together. All right, so what we're going to talk about today is a few common mechanisms of injury that we, we find. We're going to focus on what we term today agonist-antagonist balance. Now, just so we can make it clear as to what that refers to, this is, these are current injuries that occur with maybe poor training splits, poor training design programs. With every joint in the muscle, uh, the easiest way to describe what we're going to be talking about is we've got one muscle that'll pull us this way, one that'll pull us that way. If we look at the shoulder, we start talking about the influence of pec to some of our posterior chain muscles. If that balances out, we do find that's where a lot of injuries can, can originate from. Uh, and that tend, tends to be what we spend a lot of our time addressing with, with guys like Cody and trying to help people out. So that's where we'll start with today. So when we talk agonist antagonist dysfunction, and especially when it comes time to deciding what kind of program we're looking to run, we look at two main areas to source where the major dysfunction occurs. We look at the humerus, and then we come behind and we look at the scapula. Now, with the humerus, what we're looking for is the shoulder sitting nice and even, nice and neutral. We're looking to make sure there's no excessive internal tilt and that there's no drop on the left hand side, I guess you'd say. Now, with the shoulder, there's a shoulder blade, sorry, there's a few really important things we need to look at to make sure that we're stable before we actually lift. I'll just get you to turn towards the back, Cody. Can I actually lift your arms right up over your head for me? Just that nice big slide movement. Right, so when we look at the way that the shoulder blade moves, just up and down, what we're looking for is a nice, even lateral tilt. As we come back down, we're testing to make sure that we can control the movement the whole way. So what we're looking for is this border shifting all the way down in a nice, slow, controlled manner. Cody actually demonstrates this very, really, really well. So if we were looking at a, at a problem from Cody's point of view, my focus wouldn't really be here. I'd start looking more towards the humerus as, as a source of programming. All you're looking for is nice, even rhythm. A really nice general rule to go off. If it doesn't quite look right, it probably isn't. All right. Cody's going to demonstrate a bench press here. We're going to use two movements to analyze today, the bench press and the bent over row, purely because they're two of the more heavily used movements in a gym environment. All right, I'll take it away, Cody. Brilliant. So when we talk about bench press and overuse of bench press, this is how we start to develop that agonist-antagonist relationship and how we can develop muscle inhibition due to overtraining. Now, what I'll get you to do, can you stand up for me, Cody? When we look at the, the role of a bench press and the major muscles that are activated in a bench press, what we find most people will over-recruit is this lower, pe lower pec. With this lower pec insertion point, it's going to come on and grip onto the front of the humerus. If we overtrain this and use this muscle too much, what we find, the shoulder starts to shift forward and internally rotate. Once this position is altered, we all of a sudden have a neural change in the body that stops essentially this corner of our, of our shoulder from working as effectively as we'd like it to. Now, this is easily trained and easily changed. However, the pulling movements that most people do don't necessarily accommodate a better position through the shoulder, and that's what we want to also talk about today. So with the bench press, a big problem. Overuse causes internal rotation, causes a shift in the rotator cuff, and it also can have an impact on our scapula through the back of the shoulder. Between the rotator cuff and the scapula, these are our two areas that we always look to analyze, so that's what we're going to look at talking about today. Okay, so the second big movement we'll have a look at will be our bench over row. Between our bench and our bent over row, these tend to be the two big push-pull movements that we'll see in a gym quite frequently. So I'll just get Cody to demonstrate first for me. Brilliant. All right, rest down there for me, mate. Okay, so the biggest mistake people make when they look at programming effectively to make sure that you maintain this balance is misrepresenting what you're actually trying to achieve with each exercise. Now, Cody's form is fantastic with this movement. Uh, he's obviously done a little bit of work. The biggest problem we've got is hand position. Uh, hand position's a, re a really big um, change that a lot of people don't need to make to programs but forget about. The reason we talk about hand position, if we come around to the back of Cody's shoulder here and just have a look, we've talked about the pec being a really big internal rotator of the arm. Yep, so what we've got here is a movement that from this prone hand position, has a very, very heavy lat recruitment. The only problem with recruiting the lat very heavily in conjunction with the pec, we have a double source of internal rotation at the shoulder. So what we effectively do 
is start to really rotate the arm into this position here. The further this arm rotates internally, the weaker these external stabilizers in the shoulder get. This is a huge cause of shoulder pain, impingement based pain, and even mid shoulder pain, where we might have discomfort through the middle of your shoulder blades, it'll feel like it's just underneath your scapula. This position here and getting this training balance wrong is a, a key mistake, I guess, that a lot of people aren't aware of and that we spend a lot of our time trying to help people with. Okay, so a really quick change you can make with the bent over O, if this feels like it's something that might apply to your training, is changing hand positions. Now, why we say that? When we look at what the lat does as a muscle, the lat is going to extend, abduct, and internally rotate the arm. So it's going to pull my arm into this position. The problem with that internal rotation, as we've already talked about, is the effect that it has up here on the humerus in conjunction with your bench press movements. By simply changing our position and flipping the palm forward, we take out the internal rotation at the humerus. We therefore lessen the activation of the lat. This is going to put a little bit more emphasis on external rotators to hold the shoulder in place. It'll also give us more rear delt to actually extend the shoulder. What I'll get Cody to do is demonstrate for me and we'll talk from there. Right, so from this position here, by simply adjusting the position of the humerus or the arm bone, we should be able to hold the shoulders a little bit broader. The slight change in angle will allow the shoulder blades to squeeze stronger and we put a greater emphasis on our scapular stabilizers as opposed to our lap. This will then help overcome the effect of the bench press and keep us in a nice balance through the shoulders and through the shoulder blades. Okay, guys, so just building a little bit on what we've just done from a practical application point, we'll just bring a bit of theory into it. Um, what we really want to talk about is whenever we talk about shoulder dysfunction, scapular dysfunction, the key to identifying where the problem may be is the key to identifying what type of programming we look for moving forward. Now, the, ones with, the big one we've talked about so far is this pec influence on the humerus. As we talked about where the, pec, the lower pec sorry, inserts onto the humerus, it's going to cause an internal rotation and slightly shift the, the, the shoulder forward at the same time. Sorry, The biggest mistake people make from here is assuming that to overcome this pushing motion, I'm just going to pull and retract my shoulder blades. When we think about what we've just discussed, the idea of the pec pulling the humerus, trying to impact the shoulder blade is not going to have any great effect on what's happening up through the actual shoulder. This is why with our programming, when we talk about changing, we're talking about rotating the humerus, fixing the arm, then moving the shoulder blade. The biggest mistake people will make is mistaking this structure for this structure, and that's why training programs don't necessarily work as effectively as you'd like, and that's why some rehab programs may not necessarily get you the results as quick as you'd hope for. Um, this is what we talk about with all our clients, this is what we do with Cody's clients, um, and it seems to be going okay at the moment. Okay, the really important thing we haven't quite touched on uh, in relation to training just yet is the idea of mobility and flexibility through a joint. Um, so it's important that we make sure we're starting off every training program with the appropriate mobility and range through the shoulder. Should we not have the range, uh, quite simply we just won't get the muscle activation. So what I'm going to get Cody to demonstrate here is a really quick active release trigger point that you can do yourself uh, in for the pec. Really just to focus on getting rid of that internal rotation in the shoulder to allow you to open up just that little bit more in these training sessions. Um, Cody, I'll just get you to demonstrate with a stick. So what Cody's gonna do here, he's gonna look to get it, the insertion point fibers just into the front of the shoulders. When you find it, you'll know because it is quite uncomfortable. Once Cody's set with this left arm, what I'm gonna get him to do is lift the arm out to the side, externally rotate the palm up towards the roof, come a little bit higher with the arm for me, right up to this 90 degree point. This will put the pec under maximum stretch this will be the most uncomfortable part of the muscle, but this is where you get this is where you get your results, should I say. We're gonna come back down to the start and we're just gonna repeat five times. So while it may not necessarily give you the same effect as an aggressive massage or an aggressive physiotherapy release, these are really good habits just to get into because uh, it'll help make training more effective, more efficient, but it also helps you take care of your shoulder yourself as well. And as you'll find throughout the movements, the shoulder range should slightly improve and we should feel a little bit more comfortable. And then at the end of five, we're good to go straight into training. Awesome, so Zach's just gone through some great information today to talk about the shoulder health, uh, antagonist, antagonist movements, um, and giving us some really great information. So if you ever have any problems or concerns, injuries that need to be fixed through exercise, Zach's your man. Uh, here at Inspire Health, so we're going to have all the details how to get in contact with Zach and Inspire Health um, and the exercise physiologist here if you ever need any help with from that. Thanks again, Zach. No worries, thanks for having me.